end-time visions about revival and a great harvest of many souls. First of all, as believers, we must understand that according to Scripture, as the church goes, so goes the country. Of course, you've read 2 Chronicles 7.14, which says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. True followers of Jesus Christ are the engine that pushes forward God's agenda by prayer and supplication. Let me say it again. True followers of Jesus Christ are the engine that pushes forward God's agenda by prayer and supplication. What many don't understand is that God has chosen to work with and through Christians. 1 Corinthians 3.9 For we are laborers together with God. However, God blesses his goals, his agenda, not ours. We must find out what his plan is and then get in on it. If we walk and work according to his plan, the scripture in John 14 promises that we can ask whatever we want and he will do it. Why? Because it was his idea all along. Again, God always blesses his goals, so let's get in on it. Now we might ask why America seems so important in the world. On one hand, but then America is absent from scripture. Well, there are two countries that are most important when thinking of the end times, or the last days, if you will. Israel, which is our biblical timepiece with prophecies from Isaiah and Ezekiel, and then the U.S., simply because it's God's country. Wait a minute, God's country? What does this mean? I'm glad you asked. Just thinking of the U.S. Embassy's move to Jerusalem, no other nation has supported Israel like the United States. The Bible is clear. Whoever blesses Israel will be blessed, and whoever curses Israel will be cursed. Numbers 24, 9. Remember, God does not change because what he says is perfect the first time. It is clear that God has used America to protect and support Israel. But that's not all. I believe the Lord actually set aside North America from the beginning. For the longest time, this vast continent was nearly unpopulated. Allow me to share a word I believe I received from the Lord in the wake of the Twin Tower attacks on 9-11. Did I not see the oppression and the anguish of your forefathers who would not bow down to the spirit of religion and whose hearts were turned towards me with a deep longing for my truth and my presence? Therefore, I took the good seed which was rejected and planted it in a new and far-off land. And I said, this will be my harvest, a people who will build a strong and mighty nation, and they will surely serve me. Have I not created you, America, for my very own purpose? Have I not called you and set you apart from among the nations? Do you not know that I have chosen you to be a strong tower who will not be shaken, a cistern and a well full of living water? Nations will come and drink, and rivers shall flow from you to the ends of the earth. My covenant with you will not be broken. Who will darken my counsel? My wings are spread over you, and your enemies will not prevail. It is you, America, who I have created with my own hand to be a fountain of truth and life in the earth, to be a light among the nations, and to be a loud and bold voice in the wilderness, as you are called to prepare the road for the coming of the Lord. Facts are, no other nation in the history of mankind has risen to such power and influence in such a short time. It is indeed miraculous. No other nation has produced more Christian organizations worship centers, and missions and aid organizations. From no other nation has the gospel spread even into the remotest areas of the world. I am sure some of you have heard about the U.S. missionaries who were killed in the jungles of Ecuador. They even have made a movie about it called End of the Spear. America was created by God for his purpose. Does this mean America is perfect? Certainly not. You know what they say, power corrupts. When America, blessed by God, rose to great heights of power and wealth, she became proud of herself. Instead of being humbly grateful to God for his blessings, she thought that she herself 
had achieved her greatness by working hard and being smart. In other words, pride deceived her. Even so, there are still millions of God-fearing and God-loving believers in America who have given themselves to prayer and intercession. Coming back to the question why America is conspicuously absent from Scripture, when these millions of believers in the U.S. suddenly disappear during the rapture, it will cripple the nation. Of course, the whole world will be in chaos, which then allows the Antichrist to come onto the scene as the savior of the world. And with that, there will be a new world order with the world government. Okay, now let's look at one of the most unlikely and controversial political leaders in American history, Donald Trump. Is Donald Trump's presidency a coincidence? Or did God choose this man for his purpose? For those who don't like Donald Trump, whether we like it or not, God put Donald Trump into the White House. Romans 13, 1. Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Daniel 2, 21. God controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. The day after Donald Trump won the presidential race, the following vision came to me. I saw an old-style steam engine train going downhill faster and faster. Then suddenly the metal wheels locked up and sparks were flying. Someone had pulled the brakes. This is what it means. The train, which is America, was going downhill fast, led by Obama and Clinton, who were working on and supporting a global New World Order where America would just be one insignificant member. For strong independent nations to submit to a one-world central government like the UN, for example, such a nation has to become weak, losing its strength and independence. By putting Donald Trump into the White House, a financially independent man who wants to make America a strong independent nation again, God stopped that train. Many in the church have prophesied about a red tsunami, which of course always begins with an earthquake. For Donald Trump to win the presidency was like an earthquake that shook the whole nation. Again, the Lord does not change and he does not change his mind on a matter because his decision is always perfect the first time. So if we understand that Donald Trump is not president because of himself, but God put him in the White House, then we should ask if what we have seen so far happening in America is all there is, or if there should be something more God has in store. And since the church is obviously asleep in its deception, otherwise the country would not have fallen away from godly standards the way it has, the increased lawlessness we are witnessing and the opposition Trump and anyone even remotely supporting him are facing is finally beginning to wake up the church. When I wrote my book entitled Awakening the Sleeping Giant, The Church and the Road to Revival, where I am addressing the powerless church and an end-time revival, the Lord gave me a vision. In the early morning hours on November 4, 2000, I believe the Lord revealed to me in a vision what appears to be the reason for the struggle and the ineffectiveness of the church. This is the vision that came to me. I saw a gigantic dark colored bird sitting in a valley. Its position was that of a hawk or an eagle after it catches its prey. With huge wings spread out from the east to the west, the bird covered the valley with a dark shadow like a blanket. The dark shadow represents the oppression and the reason for the spiritual blindness of the people in the valley. Meanwhile, the bird was digging its talents deep into its prey, the Christian church. And just like the prey of an eagle, the church tried to wriggle and fidget its way out of the strong grip. This is the warfare and the prayers of the saints. Once in a while, a breath of foul smoke, like a heavy fog, would come from the bird's sharp-edged beak. These are the chains and strongholds on people's lives, the deceptions and the attacks, the crimes and the suicides that plague this valley and also the church. Then I saw something like crystal clear water, as thick and heavy as oil, trickling down from the clouds onto the bird who was shaking it off. This is God's Holy Spirit. But the water was also running off from the wings onto part of the church, anointing and strengthening those believers who thirst and hunger, who are God's faithful warriors. As more and more heavy water came down, the bird let go of its grip for a brief moment, trying hard to shake it off. 
This is the anointed warfare, the intercession, and the repentance of those who have been fighting for the release of the church from bondage. At this point, the Lord reminded me of Elijah's prayer as I envisioned a ball of fire coming down from the heavens, consuming the sacrifices. When I saw the bird again, suddenly a floodgate opened with thick and heavy water gushing down onto the animal. With a loud screaming noise, the bird let go of its prey as it lifted off. This is the revival of the church. The Lord also gave me a prophetic word concerning a great revival with an end time harvest, which I have shared in my book. Many have walked on the leading edge and I chose to do some of my work, but this is a new season, a final call before the great day of the trumpet. There will be no more leading edge, for I am going to cause you to jump off the edge. Yes, by faith, uncompromising faith, you must trust me and jump. And as you leave the old ways behind, opening and renewing your mind, you will know that I am doing a new, a final thing. But before you jump, you must take off your shoes, for behold, after I will catch you, I am going to set your feet on a truly solid ground, and I will give you new shoes that you must walk in, shoes that will lead and empower you for good works. You will walk in the anointing and in the light of my righteousness. You will walk and not faint. You will walk with boldness and authority. You will surely trample on demons and serpents. You will walk on a straight and narrow path the path that I, the Lord your God, have prepared for you. These are the days of the first harvest, my harvest, for I myself am bringing into my house a people selected and equipped for war. They will walk and talk in the spirit and with great power. They will be my road crew, making a way in the desert, a straight road to Jerusalem. They will prepare the coming of the Lord and they will bring in the great second harvest of many souls. This is the time for new wineskins. This is the end time. Ephesians 5.14 Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Again, God wants to work with and through his church. Now is the time to pray and seek his face like never before. As I have written in my book, the road to revival is paved with many, many prayers of a deep and true repentance, which is much bigger than most understand. This is not just about our own personal sins, but as the prophet Daniel prayed, also about the sins of our forefathers and our country. Just think about the fact that we have all participated in the abortion business with our tax dollars. Let's ask the Lord for his mercy on our nation and for revival to be poured out. In Jesus' name, amen.